This lesson will show two examples on how to evaluate indefinite integrals using the method of use substitution. Looking at the first integral, it might be helpful to rewrite this as the integral of one divided by the quantity four minus five x dx. In this form, we can see we have a rational function which fits the form of the integration formula. The integral of one divided by u du equals natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. In this case, we will let u equal the denominator of four minus five x, which means du is equal to the derivative of four minus five x times dx, which gives us negative five dx. Notice the integral does not contain at negative five dx. It has one dx, and therefore we'll solve for dx by dividing both sides by negative five. Simplifying, we have negative one-fifth du equals dx. Now we can substitute u for the denominator of four minus five x, and we can substitute negative one-fifth du for dx, which means we can write the integral as, Again, dx equals negative one-fifth du. We factor out the negative one-fifth, and we have du. And one divided by the quantity, four minus five x, is one divided by u. Negative one-fifth times the integral of one divided by u du equals negative one-fifth times natural log absolute value of u plus c, where the absolute value of u is the absolute value of the quantity, four minus five x, giving us negative one-fifth times natural log of the absolute value of four minus five x plus c as the indefinite integral or antiderivative. And we normally use a function with a capital letter to identify the antiderivative. In this case, we will say big F of x equals negative one fifth times the natural log of the absolute value of four minus five x plus c. This is the family of functions whose derivative is equal to the given integrand function. Looking at our second example, both the numerator and denominator contain e to the power of two x, but the denominator is a sum where one of the terms is a constant, and therefore the derivative is going to fit the form of the numerator. We will let u equal the denominator of four plus three times e to the power of two x. And now we determine du, where du is equal to the derivative of four plus three times e to the power of two x times dx which gives us zero plus three times e to the power of two x times two, or six times e to the power of two x times dx. Again, the six came from the derivative of three times e to the power of two x, which is three times e to the power of two x times the derivative of two x, which is two, again giving us six times e to the power of two x, and then for du we have times dx. And now looking back at the integral, we know we can substitute u for the denominator of four plus three e to the two x, and we're left with five e to the two x times dx. Notice we have six times e to the two x dx. So because they don't match, we will solve for e to the power of two x dx by dividing both sides by six. Simplifying, we know that one sixth du equals e to the power of two x times dx. And now we can substitute one six du for e to the power of two x dx, and we can factor out the five. So writing the integral in terms of u, we factor out the five, and then again, e to the power of two x dx is one six du, we factor out the one sixth, and then we have du, and because u is equal to four plus three times e to the power of two x, the integrand function is now just one divided by u. Simplifying, we have five six times the integral of one divided by u du, which we know is equal to five six times natural log absolute value of u plus c, which in our case is five six times the natural log of the absolute value of four plus three times e raised to the power of two x plus c. In this case though, we can drop the absolute value because the quantity four plus three times e to the power of two x is always positive. So we have five six times natural log of the quantity four plus three times e to the power of two x plus c, which we can label as big F of x.
I hope you found this helpful.